Okay, you're all set. All right. Welcome everybody to the July 15th, 2020 meeting of the Davidson Historic Preservation Commission. We'll do a quick uh, roll call. Bob Sipp? Yes, here. John Burgess? Here. Lorraine Degree? Here. Craig Lewis? Present. Uh, we see EB, but I'm not sure that he's he can hear us yet. Uh, Tom Goodwin? Here. He gave us a thumbs up. <laughs> and a Mike Kessler. Here. And Brian Boom is here as well. It, has everybody had a chance to review the previous month's meeting minutes? Meeting minutes? Yes. 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 Do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve from Bob. Second. Any second? I second. Thank you, Lori. All right. Any changes to the agenda, Lindsay, or? Um, I think we need to do, Cindy, do we need to do a roll call for the? Anytime you take a vote, Brian, you're gonna to need to do a roll call and call each person out by name um, and get their vote at, after you've called out their name. Okay, we are voting to approve the last month's meeting minutes. Bob Sip? Here. Yes. Lorraine? Here. Yes. Tom? Yes. Craig? Yes. EB? John <laughs> Burgess? Here. Mike Kessler? Yes. And I approve as well. Thank you. And let the record show that the EB gave a thumbs up, so that counts as a yes. Okay. <laughs> Lindsay, we'll go ahead and turn it over to you then. Okay. Um, Betsy, if we could pull Dave Maschewski into the meeting and Mike Orlando. Hello. Mike. Hey, Mike. Dave is in here. He's just muted. So um, we will need to swear in witnesses before we go through the presentation. So should Brian read out the um, oath and then we can each say that we affirm? Yes. Okay. Um, what, one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I need to, I'm going to need to recuse myself um, of, of this conversation and vote because of my relationship with the applicant. So do I do that now? What's your relationship? Uh, I, I, uh, I work for TSG Residential and oh, you, you did. Uh, in a partner with Mike Orlando. So what you need to do is to ask the other members to vote to recuse you. And I'm sure that they will because I clearly see a conflict um, with this. Okay, so, so uh, I will officially ask the other members to recuse me from this conversation because of my relationship with the applicant. Okay. Craig? Yes, I move that might be a recuse from uh, uh, this agenda item. <laughs> Bob Sepp? Yes, accuse, recuse. <laughs> accuse is better. <laughs> uh, Lorraine? Yes. Tom Goodwin? Yes. And I agree to his recusal as well. So do I. All right, Mike. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Let's we'll catch up with you later. Yeah. Okay, so Brian, if you could um, read out the oath and then I the three of us I will. I did not put it out prior to this meeting. So I had it a couple meetings. What is the standard language for that? The standard language is you swear the whole, to tell the whole truth, oh. nothing but the truth to help you, God, or do you affirm? I don't have a language in front of me either. Yeah. Right. 
Okay, panelists, do you agree to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. And so we'll need the two um, presenters from the project team to also affirm. So we have David. Is that Jeff Deming? David Malashiski and Mike Orlando. Okay, sorry. Dave Malashiski, do you affirm? I do. Did, did you hear that? I did not. No. No. Okay. We heard it that time. Gotcha. And Michael Orlando. I'm ahead of you, man. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. So I will share my screen with the presentation and get started. Okay, can you all see the PowerPoint presentation? Yes. Yes. So the first project um, on our agenda tonight is an old, old item that you all saw back in February. Um, the project, as I mentioned, was previously presented to the commission for an FYI review on February 19th. The applicant proposes front facade changes at 120 South Main Street. Um, this is the, the fifth third bank building. The building is currently being used for bank and CPA offices. The applicant also plans to create two new retail spaces adjacent to the fifth third bank office space. So here we have the vic a vicinity map showing the project site location. Um, it's located across South Main Street from the Davidson Library and it is just north of Main Street Books and Summit and also Pickled Peach. So here we have a few historical photos of the of Main Street. Um, in the image on the left, can you see my cursor? Yes. yes. This is the building here. And then in the image on the right, the building is also on the left side of that image. So the next few slides will show the existing condition of the building. The existing first floor facade is not original, um, while the existing second floor facade is original to the building. The entire building facade facing South Main Street is in need of repairs, um, and facade improvements are proposed to strengthen the appearance of a building base. The new design will articulate the storefront mullion pattern and the existing second story windows facing South Main Street. The building design also attempts to break the facade down into two distinctly different sides. Here we have a few more images of the existing condition of the building. The image on the left shows the right side of the front facade. It's a little confusing, but that's the CPA side. Um, and then the image on the right shows the fifth third bank side of the facade. And one more image of the existing conditions. And here we have the sketch that you all saw at the FYI review in February and the revised sketch. So materials will primarily remain the same. The brick will be repainted because it's not feasible to remove the existing paint without causing damage to the underlying brick. The new fifth third bank facade will be white um, ephus at the first floor with a rectangular canopy above the building entrance and an ATM. The ephus facade on the left side of the first floor facade will extend up to the edge of the paint change between the two buildings, which was a request at the FYI review. The right side of the building will include two new storefront spaces with cedar plank awnings above each new entrance. Here we have the proposed first floor plan and the demolition plan of the existing front facade. The proposed front elevation. 
the storefront awning detail and the bank canopy detail. So with that, I will open it up to the project team to fill in anything that I might have missed and also to answer any questions that you all have. Just before um, Sorry, what was that? Yes, Dave is gone. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Was that Dave? Dave trying to get on the line? Could we send David the phone number to call in? Yes, it should be at the bottom of his confirmation okay. email as well. I'm not sure if he heard that. <laughs> I did. I did. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me yet? We can. Welcome to Zoom. Enter your meeting ID followed by pound. Of course, now your connection's great. Yeah, now we can hear so you. You can hear that. Okay. Well, let me just say we just moved into the house. Our internet connection is continuum, and I apologize. Eight, five, two. <laughs> so if you can hear me now, I'll continue. <laughs> Yes. Oh, all right, good. So can you go back to the photo of uh, the last photo that you presented? Um, there, yeah, keep going. Of the existing facade? Yeah. Yes, one okay. more back. Okay, so I uh, just wanna point out, oh, go back. To oh, previous. Two slides back. This That's one? right there, yes. Okay. So note the window patterns above. Um, just to reiterate our conversations last time, you see the, uh, the recessed area in brick above the pattern of windows that sort of clearly breaks the, the upper facade into two halves. And just note that center line. So the center line of the total building kind of comes down between the ATM and the entrance door to the upstairs. Just, just note that. Um, that's the point at which we're trying to differentiate the two the two facades. Um, okay, fast forward one slide. Okay, that was the the older presentation. Just just take note of the EFIS uh, approach that we're that we're do, that we're uh, implementing. Um, disregard the green. I, I don't think we're going to go with the green canopy. I, I I just I don't think it's worth adhering to that brand so distinctly. So um, we're open to suggestions. My suggestion would be to go to um, an anodized aluminum in a clear anodized uh, for that canopy. Um, and now fast forward to the next slide. Now the only, the only kind of lingering question for me is do we want to pull back the, the point at which the EFIS approaches it, it really at this point. Yeah, we lost you, Dave. We lost you, Dave. <laughs> I see his finger.
attendee and will be muted throughout the meeting. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, you can. Yes, there you go. Okay, so this is a bit of a challenge. Let me turn my volume down here. Okay, hopefully this will stay connected. So as I had mentioned, we're on continuum and we just got this service having moved in the house. So I apologize, it's not well tested. Um, so the lingering question for me, uh, we would like to consider a small adjustment is, if you'll notice the um, ethos right now extends beyond the center line of the building. So I'm, I'm happy to pull that back in our detailing. Um, so, but the paint, the, the paint scheme would be the, the brown color. I sent Lindsay the actual color selections. I apologize that wasn't in the package. So if we need to come back for that, you all let us know. Um, but we're, we're proposing fresh paint white on the, on the right side and sort of a, a medium brown color on the left side. And then uh, the fifth third bank will be crisp and sort of have a little bit more of a modern approach. Uh, the canopy um, and the logo would have to come back. We're just making suggestions for that. Uh, we would have to come back with fifth thirds um, preferred signage for the building, um, which could either go on the canopy for the building. Um, and then uh, as far as the color of the canopy goes, I'm, I'm gonna, suggest that we go to a clear anodized mike if you're okay with that as opposed to the the branded green um the ethos is intended to have uh, some reveals that sort of give it a horizontal feel and again contrasts with the storefronts on on the other side of the building and we're really working with the existing window patterning that's there and just kind of refreshing the storefront um, the ATM would obviously stay in place. The canopy uh, that is constructed as part of the facade would replace the need for um, the blue canvas type awning that you see over the ATM that's currently there. The um, and then the other the other side of the building, what we're doing is combining uh, the entrance to the second floor. The owner had requested if we could reconfigure the way you access the second floor such that um, you would gain access to the left side retail space and the upper uh, floor through that recessed pocketed area. You can see that best on the floor plan. So what this does for us is, if you'll notice, um, we're showing the configuration. If you see the dashed lines that represent the existing um, storefront bays, you see that they're dissimilar. They're not the same size. Um, and perhaps, uh, perhaps you could go back to one of the photographs and I could define, I could explain it there a little bit better. <clears throat> so if you look at the facade, uh, the center of the building is not where the entrance to the second floor is now. It's obviously to the left between the door and the ATM. And if you, if you were to combine the entrance to the second floor with the smaller retail bay, it's about the same size as the right side retail bay. So the idea here was to create two re retail bays that look identical in size and scale um, to let to, so that it, it becomes a much more simpler approach when you look at the building. You know, the right side is two equally sized retail bays, left side is one larger bay that is um, you know, dedicated to the fifth third tenant. And so could we go back to the floor plan and I can explain. So if you look at the dashed hatched areas, you'll see we've tried to delineate for you where the recessed pockets are. And we're also showing the two new pockets. So the retail bay on the right and on the left have the same recessed pocket. Um, both have entrance doors to the retail bay. And on the left side, you'll see that there's an angled door, which would actually swing the other way. Apologize for that. Um, and that, that will gain access to the second floor. And the way we're achieving that is that the existing stair 
Um, I know you're not as interested in what happens on the inside, but that existing stare is an exaggerated rise and run situation, which is not really a very comfortable stare. So we're rebuilding that stare and providing a current um, rise and run that is code compliant for accessibility, but it provides us much more of a landing at the main level so that we have a little bit of breathing room to be able to enter in this way. And so that's what the facade is reflecting. We can go back, go to the, move on to the elevations if you like. So this is the demolition drawing, basically shows those existing storefronts coming out, really the entrance doors with the uh, mullioned windows that flank each door. And then we're showing the area that is gonna have to be reworked in order to create the, the second sort of equally sized retail bay. Um, everything on, that's on the right side of the building. Everything on the left side of the building is pretty much, we're, we're taking out the storefront, the existing ethos that's, that's sort of falling apart, um, and just the areas that we're reworking around the ATM to create the new fifth, third facade. We're not doing anything to the second floor other than paint, as we had presented in the previous FYI. Moving on to the next elevation. Now here you see sort of the final um, working drawing elevation. And please interrupt with questions if you if you would like. Um, so again, the only thing that I would recommend just minor making a minor adjustment to would be where that ethos stops. I, I think it might be best served if the ethos stops at the center line of the building versus where it currently does so that we have more exposed brick um, on the left side of the storefront to the left storefront. And um, it, it basically defines that center line point. The canopies, I have a detail for those. Um, and if you'd like to go to the detail, and then we can come back to the facade. So the canopies are, are lap cedar boards and they're on a, a tube steel frame um, we can, um, if you look at, see, we've got a second page of details. If you go to the next page, I can pull up keep the going. If you um, need me to actually pull up the plan set. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go back to the elevation. Let me finish explaining what we're doing with the storefront. And then there may be questions about, um, about the canopies. The vertical lines are where we will have joints uh, in in the the cedar planks. So there's the tube steel frame beyond um, provides a way for us to sort of break that up a little bit more. So the, the boards, you know, they're they're planks that that lap and run horizontally, and then we have they're broke at vertical points um, of the tube steel. Okay, so the storefront uh, is all aluminum. It's proposed as being black uh, or black-brown. Um, we have a small lanes coating and then uh, up to that height that you're seeing there and then above it is, is all uh, storefront. And I, I got a text from Michael. <laughs> um, the color of the fifth third elevation is gray, SW Ozark shadow. Um, just for reference. And that was in the sheet that we had sent, Lindsay. I think you got an email from Mike. My email has been giving me trouble today. That was just to clarify, Dave. I think you said that that was going to remain brown, the brick above the fifth third um, retail level. We'd like to. I got it. Okay. We'd so like to color rendering. A light gray. The color, okay. So the color rendering we're showing doesn't accurately reflect the final color selection. And we can change that. Um, so I, I'm sure there are things that I didn't cover, but let's start with some questions um, so that we can unveil that. Uh, Dave, this is Brian. Is there going to be any lights on top of the fifth third canopy that illuminate their signage? Well, I'm not sure where the signage is going yet. The intent at this point is to have recessed lighting under the canopy. So um, my thinking is that the signage would go on the face of the canopy uh, versus above it. 
it, it doesn't seem like the best location for visibility. Um, so, uh, but we we haven't we have not coordinated that with the third bank, and that's something that we would want to come back for. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. I should I should note that signage now is a minor um, OA, so it wouldn't necessarily have to come back to the board unless you need it to come back. I guess the question is, um, I mean, my personal feeling is that I don't know how how it would look to have that upper portion lit. Um, so any thoughts that you all have on that, if that's something that matters to you, then, you know, just let us know. Upper portion relative to, uh, you're not talking about upper portion in second floor. You're talking about the no, upper sir. portion. Um, first yeah, floor. I think. I think he's only referring to the area above the canopy that is at the first floor. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, while I'm on, um, I totally agree with that reestablishing the center line of the building because right now uh, an optical illusion is telling me that the two storefronts to the right are not equal like they, right. in, fact, like they in fact are. Okay. Right. So uh, that center line is very, that. very important from a, aesthetic viewpoint in a symmetry. Agreed. Yeah, we agree with that. A couple questions for you, um, this is Greg. Um, so first question on the, the dimension of the EFIS. Is that actually, is that a dimension off of the face or is it just a, a coating, a skim coating off of the current facade? Yeah. yeah. It's a, it, it definitely has depth to it. Okay. And actually our drawing depicts that. Um, we have a section through the canopy. That yeah, that. I see that. I've got that up on my screen. It doesn't dimension the, the EFIS, but I can kind of conjecture it's about a foot. Yeah, so it is, it is reflected in, in elevation, but it's not dimensioned. Um, We've pulled back the ethos a fair amount. Right now, the existing condition is an encroachment in the right of way. Mm -hmm. um, we are still encroaching, but I think it, it's probably in the neighborhood of, of maybe eight inches up above where the brick is, and it's obviously deeper um, on the lower section. So, because the, um, so if you can see up, up top, the brick, the face of the brick is mm -hmm. the line of that. Obviously, the storefront is recessed from that um, because the brick has been removed from previous uh, modifications. So it appears thicker in that area, but it's about eight inches. So anywhere where existing brick, where it's viewed from the side, you would have about eight inches of depth. Okay. Um, and then uh, the, the canopy is not dimension, but it looks like we'll say it's two feet, two and a half feet ish yeah it's no more than it's no more than three feet um okay. yeah i apologize i should have mentioned that um yes, yeah it's not intended to provide much um it's more of an accent and we really just wanted to provide enough that we wouldn't need a second canopy over the atm okay. is there a reason why you're not extending that canopy more uh well the 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 sidewalk in that area of town isn't extremely wide. And so I don't know, it was just a gut feeling, but I'm open. I'm open to your suggestion. Yeah, I was just wondering if there was a, you know, clearly in the middle of July, we all think about shade. Um, <laughs> so uh, providing that. I don't wanna, I think the building could, I think you have to be 14 feet above the, before you're allowed to project into the right away with the building. So, so anyway, uh, you might want to check that. Okay. Um, and then the other question I had for you on the um, elevation, the colored elevation. Um, I've looked at this a half a dozen times um, in the last week. Um, the paint, at least optically to me, the paint line is not matching the center line of the building. 
Right. That's what I was talking about. That's yeah. what I'd like. That's, that's what I was hoping to change. And uh, okay. it sounds like you all agree. So, so the paint line and the EFIS change would both be held back to the center line. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, I appreciate you clarifying that. Um, now, the the question that I had though is that the center line that you're showing on the demo plan, yes, is actually not the same center line. It's not the visual center line. It's left of center. Yeah. So um, Jeff probably put that in there based on the actual dimension of the building. Okay. When I, to clarify, the center line of the building means an equidistant dis distance between those two center windows. <clears throat> so the bank of windows on the left and the bank of windows on the right, if you yeah. take that brick um, panel that's between them, you can see how it's wider than most. Yeah. Uh, the center of that would be the center line of, of the visual center line of the building that I'm referring to. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that would it'd be centered, you know, between the inset panels. Um, right. Um, and then the last, um, I guess, question maybe to the board and, and Dave, I'd like to get your response to it is, did you all consider and what are your thoughts about just having one color for the, the entire building? We, we hadn't considered, I think from the very beginning, both the ownership group and everyone involved on the design team, it felt like it would be a nice change to break it up. Um, you know, we just, it would, did come up during the FOI, so we really hadn't discussed it. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll yield to Mike to sort of get his initial take on that. I, you know. The the initial reason was we weren't sure that fifth third was going to go along with any of this. Um, and they have the right um, by lease to have a say in it. So what we wanted, what we were trying to do was um, create two separate entities that way, if, if they weren't going to play along, we could still do our side of the building um, and move forward. Gotcha. It, you know, it's always awkward to just, when you don't have any kind of um, material change, um, horizontal or vertical, to kind of make that, it's just a sort of an arbitrary paint line um, in there, so. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah. I think that's a fun thought. Dave, is there some practical way to do that? Or Craig? What? like a material change between the two to delineate clearly the separation of the building. Well, the thing that would make the most sense if brick on brick would be some sort of a recess, and I'm not sure we want to create that um, after the fact. Um, you, you, know, you mentioned I, I don't really... deterioration of the brick too. If you begin doing that, uh, you could really have a big problem. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't see it as uncomfortable maybe as Craig, you might, you might feel, um, I mean, I, in urban settings, I've seen this a good bit, um, especially, you know, obviously with paint, painted buildings that, that really do that because the, the sort of the condition of the brick isn't great. Um, and my only, you know, the reason that I've been comfortable with it is because this building is sort of an anomaly on the block and it, you know, it, it, I think the block kind of screams for some verticality, but, um, but you know it's a subjective issue, and I'm I'm not gonna. It, it's not one that that I, I would I would fight. I just I think it's a you know an interesting thing that that could be changed over time. That you know um, could easily be brought back to the one color. But I just thought it was nice to break up the the facade, especially the way that the brick recesses are done. But um, right. But we're we're open. I I don't have a strong opinion about it. I just wanted to ask the question if you know. Okay. When you thought about just because it's, you know, it's always hard how that line is going to look when it's done. Right. Um, and then maintenance of that line. Well, I, there are several buildings in downtown Mooresville that, that are a single white building that's, that's been painted into two or three different facades. And it, 
you know, I, I'm not a fan of painting brick to begin with, but uh, but it's okay. And I think it'd be even worse since this is a single building, was built as a single building in our historic district. I don't think we should add anything to the building to try to make it appear to be two buildings. You, you know, I, I mean, I think it's either one building painted all one color, or it's just a paint line that, that separates the two halves of the building, but no, no architectural uh, embellishment to, to break these into two different facades. Those are questions. Thank you. If I can just say that in the attachments about historical district regulations, I believe one of the statements made was that uh, um, there should not be a, uh, a cosmetic change made to the building to make them appear differently than they used to be to maintain the historical continuance of, of its old stature. Um, so maybe painting two different colors is challenging that regulation that's, and it's attached to this exhibit. I remember reading something to that regard. Um, and, and secondly, I, I don't have a real strong opinion as John doesn't, and, uh, but um, I don't like, I, I have a big favor to the, the brighter side of the building than to the brown side of the building. Okay. So, okay, there it is. And, uh, and I find the building much more attractive to the right than to the left um, in, in color, in coloration only. Okay. And if we reestablish the center line of the building and we maintain uh, the, the same lighter colors throughout, I think that building would come up in my just in my own personal taste, much more attractive than uh, this brown versus white. Uh, that brown, we don't intend for that to be there. Um, Dave has the color. It was a lighter gray, just a slight change from the, the right side of the building. Oh, okay, so the brown is not, in fact, brown. The brown is not brown. It's uh, mm -hmm. We're hoping that it will be, it's a Sherwin-Williams color called Ozark Shadow that's a light gray. Okay, that that would be better in just to my personal taste. Okay, but yeah. we'll update the um, the rendering rendering to accurately reflect the colors. I apologize for that. We'll change the center line and update that, and then we'll defer at, at the point when you can see what it what it really would look like um, with a subtle color change on the center line. Uh, we'll defer and. Um, you know, we'll give you the option of the two color scheme or, you know, whichever color you prefer the whole, for the whole building. I mean, it's, I, Mike, I don't, I wouldn't say that it's a major issue for us. Um, so, and, and, you know, and with respect to changing the aesthetic nature of the building uh, from a historic preservation standpoint, um, you know, the majority of this building, it does by nature change. Um, Year, year over year um, on cycle with, uh, you know, sort of the retail um, market. Uh, that's the nature of, of storefront. Um, so, you know, the majority, at least half the building uh, is kind of defying that, that, that concept and naturally so. And that's the way these, these retail shop fronts are supposed to, it's kind of what they've done over the years. So, you know, in that regard, I, I think it's it's really a minor deviation from from that. So, let us prepare that and and, and get that to you. Okay, M making two storefronts is definitely returning to its past historic presence, in my opinion. Also, um, so I, I think this new design of two storefronts, as opposed to those two, would appear to be patched in walk-in doors, this is so much more attractive than, than the other, than what okay. it is right now in existence, okay? So, okay, uh, okay. Enough, enough from Bob. <laughs> there are too many people on the line to, uh, for me taking up this much mic time. 
Does anybody have a response to Dave's comment about getting rid of the green and going clear anodized or any, any preference? Yeah, I'm all for clear anodized. I would concur with that. Yeah, I would agree with that. I have a question. Is that, I know you mentioned colors and you wanted to keep it all one or close to the two buildings close to the same color. Is that what you were saying, Bob? Uh, you know, I don't need, personally, I don't need to have it the same color, but I find uh, the contrast of the brown versus the white is uh -huh. way too much. Uh, and, and I think the right side of the building is so much more attractive color wise than the left side of the building. So, uh, and then the statement was made that that's not the real, brown is not the real color, it's actually a shade of gray. Uh, in my opinion, that would be much, much better. Um, but, you know, may, perhaps consideration for having it all one color is another option. Well, if that was the case, I think if you wanted to add color, they could actually put that in your awnings or like you said, that green can turn a, what did you say that was going to be, um, Dave, what, what type of? The, can the canopy, um, we were going to suggest the clear anodized, which is what John Burgess was suggesting mm -hmm. as well. Um, trying to get away from allowing the building to too closely resemble the color, the colors that you see in the, in the business's brand. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, are those, the windows, are they going to be clear or are they? All clear. All clear, okay. Yes. It's a very nice looking building, even the way, I'm not like, I'm not a fan of the brown either, but like you said, you'll come back to that with color. But yeah. Very good. And the no light. Excuse me. And you said the lighting above the awning, you had decided yet? We don't, we don't have any plans to light above the canopy at this point. Um, what we want to do is to go to Fifth Third and let them go through a process to determine what signage they would like to propose. Um, and at this point, we're only seeking approval for under canopy lighting. And to John's point, I, I just need to confirm that we are in compliance with that structured canopy, the way it's designed. Um, so we, if we have to come back for any other, if, if we, if the bank requires any additional lighting, we, you know, if it's required, we would come back. One more question. Is that box that's in the center on the right in the first left side building. Is that like a drop box or is that going to be an AT? So, so that, that is, um, so if you're talking about the area that is under the very end of the right side of the canopy, that is the, that is the existing ATM machine, which would remain. Oh, okay. And then the box to the left is the existing night deposit, which is being relocated. Oh. Well, really just kind of, reconfigured in its current location. Okay, I see now. It looks so, all right, I see it now. Thank you. Yeah. Tom Goodwin, do you have any, uh, any comments as well? I'd, I'd agree putting the, uh, the EFIS back on the center line of the building. Um, yeah, and I, I think, um, I'm a little concerned about if we can approve this, if there are so many changes that can be made. Um, you know, if they're coming back for for signage and canopy colors and we don't actually have the actual colors of the building in, in our package, can we actually approve it? That, that concerns me also, Tom, I've been hearing um, the applicants say they're going to come back and give you something different. So as you move through this, you might consider continuing this until the next meeting so that you have all the information you need to make a decision. Lisa, do you see that different? No, I agree with that. Any 
Any further comments from the board or Dave? Any clarifications you need from us or? Well, so uh, if we could separate the comments. <laughs> oh, should I go? Yes, go ahead, Dave. But I do have a comment. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I was. If we could kind of put the comments into two categories, the only real change is the realignment of the ethos to the center line. Um, everything else that we've talked about is really a color decision. So, um, you know, I, I guess um, what we would like to do, you know, if we if we can't have an approval tonight, which I, I understand, um, what what we would like to do is we would move forward with our plans to submit to the county. Um, obviously, there'll still be a hold on on this from the town of Davidson, but it, you know, if I, if I that moving that ephus to the center line is the only sort of significant change um and we can go through that process with the county knowing that we're just coming back for color next month then i think we'll feel like we're in a good place okay john did you have a, another comment i did i had, I had two comments dave and one i kind of mentioned before um you know, I think the way the fifth third canopy is detailed, it's part of, it's not a canopy, it's part of the building. And I think then the building code would kick in. And I, John, you're breaking up pretty badly. I'm sorry. You must have, some, you have continuum also? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. Um, we sold I, that company. Can you hear me better now? I'm sorry. I'm leading in. My volume turned down maybe. I don't know. Can you guys hear me? I can yes. Yeah. I can hear you fine, John. All right. Well, listen, the way, uh, the way the canopy is detailed over fifth third right now, it's part of the building. It isn't attached to the building. And uh, the, it's projecting into the right of way. And, you know, I believe the code used to say 14 feet if you had a balcony or something on the second floor had to be 14 feet above the street. I, I didn't check that today. I can't swear that's the truth, but I believe the way it's detailed now, it's part of the building. It's not attached to the building. It's not a temporary thing. It's not an awning. It's part of the building. So I, I think you gotta check that. And then the other thing related to both, uh, related to both awnings, uh, details six and seven, A400, uh, show about 12 inches of flashing uh, above the canopies um, that aren't shown in the elevation. And, uh, you know, I, I think that would be objectionable, you know, the, the 12 inches of flashing that's shown. So, uh, uh, Dave, if you look at six and seven, A400, you know, I think you could, I think you could definitely uh, saw cut one of the brick joints or something and tuck the flashing, you know, tuck the flashing into a saw cut joint and cock it and, and not be required to have that uh, 12 inches of flashing. I mean, I think you can get away with uh, maybe one brick's worth of flashing, um, but that should also be shown in the elevation uh, when you That's come by with the drawings next time. Okay. That's fine. Okay, great. That's all I have. There's no further comments. Does somebody want to make a motion? Make a motion to defer. We need a motion for that. We're not taking any action. Do we need a motion to defer? Right. I think we've done that in the past. I'll make a motion to defer if we need one. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Greg, how do you vote? Aye. Tom? Yes. Bob Sip? Yes. 
EB, are you on the line? Mm -hmm. uh, Lorraine? Yes. Okay, and I as well. Motion is approved to defer further review. Okay. Um, before we kind of leave this, there are obviously just a couple little things left on this um, to clear up. It seems simple these days to call a Zoom meeting for a review. I don't know if, if you all need to get this approved before the next month's meeting and if we could hold a simple special meeting to review the changes. I don't know what the feeling of the board is on that and what your time schedule is. Thank you for that offer. I think if we're confident that these small <laughs> changes will meet approval next time, next in a month, then I'd be fine with that schedule. But, you know, if, if we're going to have a couple more iterations and I'd say we'd accept your suggestion. Didn't sound like from the board discussion that there were any other changes other than the things that we discussed. So it should be pretty straightforward, but I just want to kind of put it out. Like I said, these days, all we need to make sure is we, handle our notice properly and then everyone can make the meeting. Um, but, uh, Thank you for that. Yeah. Lindsay, would it, would, would it be possible to send a package out like maybe a week in advance, give us time to look over, see if there's anything glaring? And Yes. Yep. Yeah, not, not a problem. Okay. Cool. Okay. Do we have a motion to bring Mike Kessler back in? Motion. <laughs> Died for lack of a motion. Oh, well. If you guys don't want to bring it back in, it's fine. <laughs> I'll second it. Bring Mike in. Okay. Uh, Bob Sip? Yes. Lorraine? Second. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Tom? Yes. Craig? Aye. EB, don't see a thumb. John Burgess? Yes. And I agree as well to bring Mike back into the meeting. Okay. Back. Um, so with that, we can move on to our next agenda item. Thank you, David and um, Mike Orlando for being on the call. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Okay, Betsy, so now we need um, David Strange to be pulled into the call. All right, David's on the screen, he's just muted. Okay. Thank you. And um, we'll need to swear David into the meeting as well, Brian. Okay. David, do you solemnly agree to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. So with that, I'll move on to the presentation and share my screen. Do you all see the PowerPoint slides? Yes. Okay. Um, so our second item is a certificate of appropriateness for an accessory structure at 525 North Main Street. I should note that in addition to being located in our local historic district, this property is a designated historic landmark. It is the Curry Adams House um, built in 1900. Um, and so exterior changes require approval by the Charlotte Mecklenburg Landmarks Commission in addition to the Davidson HPC. And the Landmarks Commission issued a COA for the guest house at their meeting on Monday night. So just to make you all aware of that. Additionally, um, renovations to the primary structure were submitted prior to the effective date of the North Main Street Local Historic District. So um, the addition and changes to the primary structure do not require a COA from the Davidson HPC. Um, however, plans were provided with the meeting agenda 
for your reference um, so that you knew what the materials would be on the edition. So here we have a vicinity map showing the site's location on North Main Street. Um, the property backs up to the railroad right of way and also the Davidson College Hurt Hub. This is an image of the front of the um, existing home. The primary structure, as I mentioned, was constructed in 1900. Um, and is a traditional two-story single pile three bay form with a side gable roof and weatherboard siding. Here we have a few more images of the existing house. The image on the left is the front right corner of the home and the image on the right is uh, the rear of the home. And here we have an image more clearly showing the existing detached garage to the rear of the existing house. The detached three-car garage is a non-contributing building and was constructed in a, around 1975. So here we have the proposed site plan. Um, you'll see the existing home here, if you can see my cursor, the addition to the rear of the existing home here the existing three-car garage, the existing home, and behind the detached garage is the proposed accessory structure that is part of this COA application. The structure, or the proposed accessory structure will have a footprint of approximately 780 square feet, is less than 30% of the footprint of the primary structure which is one of the requirements in section four of the Davidson Planning Ordinance. Materials for the proposed accessory structure include white hardy um, lap siding, white hardy board and batten siding, actual shingle roofing. The proposed materials match those used on the addition to the primary structure. So here we have the front elevation of the or the proposed accessory structure. If we go back to the site plan, the front will be facing the backyard. Um, so it faces away from the neighboring property to the north. Here we have the right side elevation of the accessory structure. The left side elevation and the rear elevation, which would face the neighboring property to the north. Um, here we have a typical wall section of the guest house. And this image was not sent out with the agenda, but was sent um, to me by the Charlotte Mecklenburg Landmarks Commission. Um, and it just shows the elevation of the property to idea of what the height of this accessory structure will be in relation to the house. And then a perspective from the street, again, showing the height of that accessory structure as it relates to the primary structure. So with that, I will open it up for questions and discussion um, from our project team. Back up one slide. Or two slides, one more slide. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. David Strange, do you have any anything uh, additional to add? No, um, you know, really everything matches the house. I mean, we've kind of gone through everything with Charlotte and, and kind of met everything they've asked us to do. So um, really just going through the process um, for just final approval, I guess. Okay, thank you. Any comment, initial comments from the board members? You need some more time to look at it, think about it. Yeah, just um, a, a couple of things. First, I thought it very funny that you mentioned that it's a 45 year old structure, but it's not contributing. Um, as someone who just turned 50, I feel like I'm not contributing either. So. <laughs> um, in five years, however, in that structure maybe. Um, 
you know, actually this, uh, the picture that you have up is sort of interesting. I actually had to look at it twice um, because I was looking at the floor plans of the, the house and there's a massive expansion that's happening off the back. And so that's not a, an eave line height that's coming off the back. That's actually the extension, the expansion of the house coming off the back. That's correct. Um, it puts the accessory structure much more in, in scale, if you will, um, with the rest of the house. Uh, right now, it looks like it's, it, it's larger than the existing house, uh, but it would not be. Um, it, not that anyone would perceive it from that um, section anyway. Uh, but I just want to clarify that for others who, who saw it differently than I did. I don't have any any specific questions or comments regarding the application. My only question is uh, the I, I think that one of the main points of uh, approval is the line site from the street to the proposed structure, and I see that there well. There you go. The carriage house roof peak is visible from the street. And I just ask, according to the rules, if you will, if that's permissible. Lindsay, are you answering that one? Um, yes, I can look for that section in the guidelines quickly. It is permissible to be seen. Right. So the guidelines state to site new garages or accessory buildings so they do not compromise the overall hyster historic character of the district streetscape or the specific site and its primary building. Um, so they should be cited to be consistent with other accessory buildings within the district in terms of setbacks and orientation to the street. So um, it's not saying that it can't be visible, but it should be it should not compromise the overall historic character of the district. Thank you. That's pretty clear that this is okay. And Lindsay, just to clarify, the historic designation is just for the house, not the property. For the landmark designation? That, yes. That is correct. Okay. I believe. Yeah. Um, I've got a. Uh, well, this is kind of a snarky question. How many families are moving into this? Just one. <laughs> Going from eight, I had to, I had to dig into this uh, PDF. So it's, it's currently 1,800 square feet going to 4,600 square feet. Yes. So uh, that's a pretty size. Okay, we were bothered, Craig, going back to when this was first going to uh, before historic, Charlotte Mecklenburg Historic Landmarks Commission, uh, Stuart Gray sent, sent these plans to us and for our review uh, and offered us the chance to make comment on it, even though we didn't have jur any jurisdiction at the time. And I, I sent him a, a long memo, you know, with uh, six or eight comments uh, about the about the addition, which we're not reviewing today, but but the comments, the, the only two things were that, you know, that the addition overshadowed the size of the existing house, you know, it was much bigger. And, but the biggest thing was the, was the roof pitches. Uh, there was other things, the window style and that, and then I guess they, they took some of those comments and actually implemented them because they have changed the window patterns to, the window styles to match the existing house and that. But the, the thing they haven't done, you know, if you if you look at the existing house, you see very little roof. It has a low pitch roof. You see hardly any shingles, right? And uh, on the on the entire addition, it also this carriage house, uh, it's mostly roof. You see more roof than you do wall surface. So um, so 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 those were my those were my comments originally, but I really have no comment on the carriage house, um, it, except for possibly what it presents to the property next door, okay? It, it's not what you see from the street, but uh, what the neighbor sees. You know, and what he sees isn't just a whole lot of roof 
and uh, uh, but but I, I guess that's not really our purview uh, to to defend the neighbor. Um, I, I think the carriage house is mostly invisible. Uh, I, I I don't have any reason to, to make a comment on this stuff at this time. But I do uh, I do in general think that the addition doesn't really comply with the local historic district <laughs> guidelines. And, and if it were in our purview, we'd have a lot of comments to, to make about it. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox, that's all. Um, David Strange. Yes, sir. Um, are, during this renovation, are they also um, renovating the garage itself? They're not. Okay. And that was the original plan, you know, for, for everybody on here, that was the original plan, but because it was built too close to the setback originally, we weren't allowed to change it. Originally, we wanted to go two story with just the existing garage, but because it doesn't meet the current setbacks, we weren't able to do that. Okay. So that's why we're adding the second building. Gotcha. Chair, I move that we issue a certificate of appropriateness for this carriage house. I'll second that. Motion has been made. Uh, John Burgess. Oh, you have your hand up. He's on mute. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I vote to approve for the certificate of appropriateness. Okay. Uh, Bob Sepp? Yes. Tom Goodwin? Yes. Lorraine Degree? Lorraine? You're muted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I also approve, Brian. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> Who seconded that vote or that motion? I did. Hey, okay, thank you. Thank you, David Strange, for being here. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks, David. No problem. Yeah. Is there anything else on tonight's agenda? Nope, that is it. Motion to right. close the meeting. I'll make a motion to close the meeting. I'll second. second. <laughs> it's good to see you, everybody. Hey, yeah. Thanks. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks. Uh, stay healthy. Stay home. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you.